Well, for more on Pakistan's economy, I spoke with Michael Kugelman. He's the Senior Program Associate for South and Southeast Asia for the Asia Program at the Wilson Center here in Washington. I began by asking what he thinks about Pakistan being dubbed as the next big thing in emerging markets. Even the most hardened cynic of Pakistan would need to acknowledge that there have been tremendous uh, macroeconomic uh, improvements over the last few years. You know, GDP growth uh, is, has been the highest it's been in a number of years. You've had a number, uh, a number of key industries, uh, construction, IT, a number of others that have really been doing quite well. And uh, you just see this. So when I was last in Pakistan uh, a few months back, uh, you just see all the construction, the telltale signs, the tower cranes, all this development. Things are happening, and that's really great. But I, I think we do need to be cautious. I, I do think we need to weigh the, uh, the success stories uh, in the economy with the very real fact that there could be some artificial issues, some exogenous factors that could be responsible for the economic successes, and particularly the, uh, the lower uh, oil prices that we've been seeing around the world. I think that could have an impact on these improvements in Pakistan. But that should not take away from the fact that things are looking up. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully, given all the troubles that Pakistan has experienced, that these economic successes can, can be somewhat lasting. And, and speaking of the troubles, obviously, Pakistan does have somewhat of an image problem when it comes to, to terrorism, which is usually why people see it making the headlines, as well as political violence. But as you mentioned, GDP seeing its fastest growth in, in eight years. We're seeing a growing middle class, inflation under control. So what is Pakistan doing right? I think that uh, Pakistan's image has always been so troubled and investors have been sh scared away for so many years because of all the horrible terrorist attacks. And yet, really over the last two years, since the Pakistani military uh, launched a, uh, a major counter-terrorist offensive in the tribal region of Pakistan, you just don't have as many attacks. Um, and I think that that has really provided a, an opening for investors. Now, unfortunately, they're not rushing into Pakistan yet because, let's face it, Pakistan is still experiencing terrorist attacks. Not as many as previously, but you still have these mass casualty attacks, including several over the last few months. One just a few days ago uh, in, in Quetta in Balochistan. There was a park that was attacked in Lahore earlier this year. And these types of attacks, even though they're somewhat isolated, you know, they, they draw tremendous media headlines, as they should, and I think that these types of things keep people away. But the fact that the terrorist violence is down and that more, fewer people are dying uh, in terrorism in Pakistan, that should be a window of opportunity that Pakistani officials should, should take advantage of and try to get investors, try to make a push to bring foreign investors into the country. And something that people are also paying attention to, Pakistan's benchmark equity index, the KSE 100, doing incredibly well. We saw that it was the top performer in Asia and fifth overall in the world. So even against this backdrop of, of the negativity and the terrorism, what's driven driving this stock market performance? Well, I mean, I think you have to go to confidence, uh, to investor confidence. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've said that uh, you don't have investors coming into the country, but the fact that there have, the country has stabilized just a bit in the sense that you don't have things blowing up as much, that, that makes people more confident, and I think that could have an impact uh, on, on the stock market. Uh, again, don't know how long it's going to last, but I think that that uh, increasing confidence, not just within Pakistan, but outside, in terms of people watching the country uh, from the outside, see that things are just calming down, and that could have a very useful, positive impact on, on the stock market. Now, let's also look at trade. We saw that China overtook the U.S. in 2012 as Pakistan's largest trading partner. And now you have the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor that's under development as part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative. How much of a game changer do you think that will be? Yeah, well, I mean, l let's face it, uh, you know, this China-Pakistan Economic Corridor um, could be a huge milestone achievement. Uh, for Pakistan and its economy just because of all the potential. We're talking about 40, $46 billion worth of investments uh, in Pakistan. And a lot of these investments are meant to be energy focused. And, you know, if Pakistan really wants to make lasting economic improvements, it needs to get its energy crisis in order. You just have so many factories that have continued to have to close down because they don't have power to sustain themselves. You can't have a strong economy if you have power shortages and power failures all the time. So this CPAC project, this economic corridor, is meant to uh, uh, develop a lot of coal plants, um, solar plants, uh, and the infrastructure to support these types of things. So if it actually happens, if things take off, and I know that uh, you know, people on the ground in Pakistan are talking on very operational uh, levels about moving forward with this corridor, 
If it does go forward, it could be a huge game changer for Pakistan. But I think that unfortunately, since we're talking about Pakistan, there are things that you have to continue to worry about. And one being, quite frankly, the security situation. As much as, as it's improved, there's still a lot of unrest in the parts of the country uh, where this project would be going through, such as Baluchistan and, and other areas. So uh, a lot of potential, but uh, again, a lot of risk. So then in terms of balancing that potential for growth with a lot of this, the risks that do still exist, what would you say is your outlook then for Pakistan's economic growth? Well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, optimistic about the short term. But uh, as we get into the medium and particularly the long term, I really start to worry. And I'll tell you why. I mean, as you look at the demographics of the country, a very large population, a very young population that theoretically should be able to uh, fill a lot of jobs and get the economy uh, going where it needs to go. Problem is, uh, Pakistan, you have an education crisis, many, many millions of kids that are not in school that have very little education. Um, and you have very low percentages of young people that get any sort of vocational training. So in a, in, in a sense, or in, in essence, what you have is um, all of these people, all of these young people that are simply not going to be competitive for the job market, um, which I think puts a damper on, on all this good news that we're hearing about Pakistan. Because if you're going to have all these young people not in a position to get jobs, what happens down the road? And it's, it's really is something to, uh, to be concerned about.